Good afternoon. We're Team 15. My name is Ashish Gagey. My name is Anisal Hawk. My name is Kevin Kang. And today we're here to talk to you about the DuPont model. Okay, uh, here's a picture of uh, Frank Thomas Brown. Uh, he, he's a guy who developed the DuPont model. He was born in uh, 1885. Uh, he served as a financial executive and corporate director with DuPont and General Motor Corporation. He went to uh, Virginia Tech as an electrical engineering major and got masters from uh, Cornell University and joined the DuPont company in 1908. In 1914, uh, he joined uh, DuPont's treasury department. Though he was an engineer, uh, he was he had a great mind in finance, and he was able to uh, take the spot for it. Uh, DuPont Company was an American uh, chemical company founded in uh, 1802. Uh, the company is still the world's uh, third largest uh, chemical company out there. And in 1918, uh, DuPont Company bought 23% uh, of uh, General Motors stock and Brown was given the task of cleaning up the car makers' uh, Tango finances. And during this uh, project, uh, he developed a DuPont model. Alright, so uh, we asked ourselves what is the DuPont model, and a good definition for it is basically it is a technique used to analyze the profitability of a company using management tools. Um, we'll get into the actual model itself, but just an overview is uh, all the elements that make up the DuPont model usually come from a, from a company's either income statement or balance sheet. It's a combination of both. And at the end of that, uh, you basically use the ratio of return on investment, on asset, um, and that is, can be calculated by net operating profit after taxes divided by sales times the sales divided by the average net assets. And you get all this information from the DuPont model, which we'll get into next. Uh, here's a picture of the DuPont model. As you can see, like I said, it all, uh, the way it works is a company will have all their financial statements. So the managers, whoever is in charge of putting together the model, has to go in there and basically take out all these different elements. Uh, you have cost of goods sold, you have interest expense, you have income taxes, you have cash, you have accounts and receivables, you have inventories, you have marketable securities, you have other measurements of investment of working capital. You have land, you have building, you have machinery, equipment, and you have intangibles. So when you get all this information from your balance sheet, you basically plug it into each, uh, each input and then you move on to the next step. And what the next step does will get you down to a lower level. We'll have your sales, your total costs, your current assets, and your non-current assets. Then you move on to the next one which is your net income, your sales, and your total assets. Then you get down to net profit margin and total asset turnover, and that'll give you a return on assets. So basically, at the end of the day, you can take, it gives you a good breakdown of every single aspect of the DuPont model. And then the, the formula you use is the ROA, which, like I said, was net operating profit after taxes, divided by sales, times sales, divided by net assets. So you can basically just pull out the numbers from the DuPont model and plug it into the formula. Uh, we ask ourselves next, after we do all this, why do we use this model? The reason it's used is it gives uh, you know, a department such as purchasing or sales uh, an accurate uh, reason on why they're getting a certain amount back from an asset. So sometimes it might be good or sometimes it might be uh, bad, but you can always use this model to go down and actually see where the problem's at. Um, it analyzes changes over time, so you can have a DuPont model for like this year and do one five years from now, and then you can go back and look at what accounts are changing. And if you feel something's wrong with one of the accounts or you want your uh, company to operate more efficiently, you can go in there and you can just go to a low level and see all the inputs into the DuPont model and see where your problem's at. It also teaches pe people within the company a, a basic understanding of what they need to do to make the uh, company operate as efficiently as possible. So like I said, if there's a problem in the sales department, you can go to the sales department and break down exactly where the problem's at and they can work on uh, correcting that and making the company more uh, efficient and a better profit going forward. Um, and the last reason it's used is it gives a company a good idea of what they're doing compared, uh, compared to their competitors. Um, 
if a competitor is doing better than you, you can see you know why they're doing better than you basically from all the elements of the DuPont model. Or if you're doing better than them, better than them, you can see what you're doing good and you can continue to do that. So that's basically a breakdown of the usage of the DuPont model. All right. Next up is the strengths of the DuPont model. Um, first and foremost, it's very simple. It's extremely easy to use. All you do is you just plug in the numbers that you obtain from the balance sheet into the DuPont model and um, from there you just do all the calculations and you get your return on um, <coughs> return on assets and um, after that it's um, <coughs> as Ashish mentioned before it's a very good tool to teach people on how they can impact uh, results also it's uh, universal to all businesses so not only um, was it modeled for, for General Motors, but it, it can be used by any, any business from even, even DuPont itself, a chemical company can use it, or um, even, even an institution like the University of Houston can use the DuPont model to see uh, where their ROA is going. So it's, it's, um, it's a universal model for all businesses of any type. Also, um, you can use the DuPont model to convince uh, the management side that you are uh, meeting your goals and you are um, meeting your expectations because uh, you can convince them that you don't have to look towards like a company takeover or company buyout to increase uh, your income or your capital. You can basically just uh, show them and convince them that all you have to do is just increase your turnover and try to achieve synergy so that you can uh, increase increase your uh, capital also um, you you want to uh, it's based on accounting numbers which aren't always reliable because of human error also you can't you can't keep into account every where every single dollar is being spent and where everything's going um, but the basic assumption of the DuPont model is that the accounting numbers are reliable and um, the next limitation is that it does not include the cost of capital um, for instance uh, the cost of developing an asset over time is not taken into account because um, it's 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 over a certain period of time and and you uh, the accounting the balance sheet doesn't the DuPont model doesn't take the um, that cost into account so it does not encompass every aspect of the accounting balance sheet, but in most cases, the DuPont model uh, re achieves its results for what it is used for, for the ROA, and uh, it gets the job done. Um, <coughs> lastly, here are citations. Bas uh, we got it from the link provided from the class, the 12 managecom um, for the DuPont methods. Also, the Wikipedia pages for the DuPont chemical company, as well as the Wikipedia page for Frank Donaldson Brown. And that will conclude our presentation. So in conclusion, basically, you can see that the DuPont model is a very powerful tool. And throughout all my teammates and I see that it's still used a lot throughout the world today. So uh, hopefully I'll learn something and thank you all. Thank you. So you can cut that part out. Yeah, I'll cut it out. Yeah, it came out to...